welcome to the Power Platform Daily Brief Podcast for Thursday the 8th of, I think we're still in August, and Ian has decided that he would rather spend his time in Ibiza like a 19 year old little boy in all the clubs and pubs, so I have got somebody else with me today, so I have Mike Hartley. Mike, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, hi there everyone. So I'm Mike Hartley, also known as Heart of the Midlands, um, at Heart365 on Twitter. But it's great to be with you, Mark. So as you'll know, we kind of just round up everything that's happening in the dynamics industry and blogs and social media and just generally chat nonsense. Well, Ian does. Anyway, I've got valuable points, he doesn't. So, I think you've looked out a couple of blogs for us this week. So, do you want to hit us off with the first blog that you've got? Yeah, so, the big topic, I think, at the moment has been the talk of all the licensing changes that are about to hit us in October. And um, Steve Mordieu has written a really interesting post called Reduce your Dynamics 365 license costs by 92%. And taking a general look at the whole idea of per app pricing um, when it comes to the Power Platform and this general question that's kind of out there as to, well, do we need to be licensing Dynamics 365 as a, as a plan or do we just need to license individual apps? And are there cost savings to be made yeah. there? Um, and I think for me, it's, um, it, it's kind of the, the biggest topic out there right now. No, it, it definitely is. I've literally about an hour ago come off a call on exactly that for a new project kickoff. We're looking at the licensing model. Do they need plan one licenses? Could they actually get away with a sales app, field service, or is it a customer service app and enable a new RS? There's, there's that many different ways of looking at it at the moment. And then you've got, right, actually, could you just totally miss all them out and go for a power app and use one of the power app licenses now. Um, yeah, that's it. It's just, it, it's forever changing and it's it's difficult to keep up with it. I mean, I, I'm looking at blogs online about it and trying to figure out actually what's going on because by the time you've read one, it's actually changed the next week and it's something different. So it's hard to kind of get a consistent view on, on what's happening with it. Yeah, and I, th- I think that's that matches my own experience because... You've got all the AI stuff that's just been introduced and Big Bang, use all the AI and it turns out you've got to have that license separately. And one of the things that was attractive to us with Dynamics was the fact that you could get this plan license and that isn't going away. And it it gave the impression that the licensing was maybe going to start getting a bit simpler. And that (laughs) has completely not been the case. And I I, I guess having 25, 30 odd years experience with Microsoft, I should know better now, but um, I I like to believe the best in companies. Um, So are you working with an end user at the moment or are you... Yes, so um, I I work at a charity, uh, which makes the licensing even more entertaining (laughs) for us because um, we go through a partner and then you get your not-for-profit and everything else. And I mean, every every company negotiates different licensing. And it, it just seems to me that trying as an end user to work out what your licensing should be is getting more and more complex and just just reading Steve's blog um, and trying to think well 
could we look at maybe cutting back on some of our functionality? But exactly which functionality would we lose if we were to rebuild as a power app? And he, he, he makes the point that um, if you go to a power app, you've got your development costs, you've got your migration costs, you've, the, the, there are lots of other costs to consider yes. if you want to look at reducing your licensing. And it, it's just a minefield at the moment. And as, as you say, it, you can read day by day a different blog by different people and there's always something new coming out. And I, I think we're going to get to the point where we come to October and... There will be an announcement that it will change in April. Yeah. Well, um, we're, we're still trying to get our heads around capacity-based licensing um, yeah. because our licenses have only just come up for renewal from being a year old where we bought user licensing and storage space. And now, of course, you've got capacity-based licensing. Yeah. I'm trying to get a head around that. And also around all of this per wrap. Um, and it gets even more complicated because if, if like us, you're an organization looking to utilize the power platform properly. So you're developing power apps, you're developing flows and BI dashboards. Um, you're wanting to use CDS as your data store. The licensing but that has just got even more complicated. What counts as a license when a flow is triggered from SharePoint or from an app? Is that included in a per app plan? Um, so it it's something that I think anybody involved with Dynamics and Power Apps and the Power Platform You've just got to be right on it at the moment because October could come or, or I should say license renewal time comes around yep. and you could be in for a big shock. Um, Especially if you've got a portal with the oh, new portal. Uh, I'm not even getting into that discussion today. That's oh, a, yeah, that's a, new that's a whole new thing. Um, yeah, um, I mean... I'm still trying to work out how that fits with Dynamics 365 for marketing because you get a portal as part of that. You do, um, yeah. It, it, it's it's just... It's a tangle of spaghetti at the moment that I, I, I'm kind of hoping somebody's going to come along and just sort of sort it out and be able to explain it easily. Um, I, I, I'm kind of seeing... Lots of posts of people trying to explain it, but it's all yeah, it's, it's very subjective. Their knowledge, yeah, it's definitely subjective. It's how you pick up that information. So now, Steve is very good, and obviously he's been quite uh, vocal about the the changes in licensing recently with uh, um, internal user rights as well. So oh, yeah, <laughs> so I'm sure that'll be a good one. So no, that, that's a definitely one that we will we will share with everyone. To, to go and have a look at. So the one that I'm going to talk about is a weird one that's been around for a while that um, I've not really picked up, and it's using reference panels. So a reference panel will let you have multiple subgrids in the space that one subgrid would normally be in. So if you, if you think you have like four or five different subgrids and it's just got a menu selector on the right-hand side, it's something I didn't know exist, but it's apparently been there for about a year and a half. Okay, that one's caught me out as well. Cause... Yep, so base... yep, so basically if you go in to add a new section, that section can be a reference panel, and then you just start to add in all your subgrids, add an icon, and you can just click down the right-hand side to it. So it's, it's something quite simple, but never knew it was there. Um it works really nice on the um, unified interface. So it's been there for a while. Everyone's probably going to listen to this and think, Mark, where have you been? What have you been up to? But yeah, that's uh, that's what I was having a look at today. Well, it, it's caught me out as well. It, 
it certainly yes. hasn't been mentioned in any of the Microsoft certification for customization. Um, yeah. And yeah, um, and of course, with the rumor that the classic UE could be heading for um, deprecation announcement in October, then unified UE becomes or whatever we're meant to call it these days. Modern um, yeah, you, modern interface. I think we're going with this week. Oh, is, is that is that today's buzzword? I think I think to be one. Yeah, we'll go with that. So, no, so yeah, that's what I've been. As I say, everyone will think, Mark, you're you're talking nonsense. So. But it's cool, it's there, and it can be used. So we also wanted to have a little quick roundup of an event that's happening next month. Yeah, September 7th. Yes, so that is the TD... Oh, yeah, I'll let you go for that, because I, I always get the, the name wrong. <laughs> so well, it's, the, for it. it's the TDGI um, Global Hack, uh, okay. and this one is... A hack for education. Okay. Um, and where can people sign up for that? So, um, spaces are going fast. Um, the idea is that you try and pull a team together or um, hit up TDG on LinkedIn. So if you go to tdgi.rocks as the website, okay. um, you can register for the hack and find a bit of information um but i would definitely say um looking for tdg a microsoft community i think it's listed as yep. on linkedin um that's where you'll get all the latest updates and info okay that's awesome do you know what countries that's hitting at the moment i know uh, scotland have got a team i will also be partaking as a global judge on the day um the list of countries seems to be growing day by day so um one of the main organizers is elaine you um so we've got australia we've got uh, i think we've got new zealand we've got japan we've got India, Philippines, Portugal, I think, are in there. England, Scotland, the US, Canada. Um, and I'm just losing track because we seem to be getting more and more teams. It, it really is going to be the biggest hack that has ever been seen. It's, it's just immense. So that's tdgi.rocks. Yep, that's the one. And it's on the 7th of September? It is, yeah. So the um, the teams have been split into two time zones, depending which suits their hemisphere. Okay. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the judging is going to work on that. The judging will be absolutely brilliant. I have no, well, no question about that at all. That's awesome. So we will put that link in the show notes as well. So probably a great place to wrap up. So I'll say thanks very much, Mike, for, for replacing Ian. You've had a lot more banter than we normally get from him. So that's been amazing. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.